it's one of those details that you would have noticed that if we hadn't done it. Um, this is another shot. Um, when we first did this shot, people didn't notice that there was a guy walking on water. Um, again, these eclipse only about six seconds, but here's our here's our blank frame that we shot, and there. If you look really carefully, it's kind of hard to see. This is why people never notice it. You see our little Jedi standing there on the water. So that's why we did the, the zoom. But how, how we did this is we shot this first, and then we went to Jody's house, and I climbed up on top of his roof, and we built a little blue screen studio in his backyard. Uh, those are just, uh, the bottom is just a blue tarp. It's just a blue tarp that you can buy at Home Depot. Um, stretched over some 2x4s with some water filled in. And then uh, I went up on the roof and had a still snapshot of our blank footage to get to see if I could get the right angle, which took, I had a theory about it, and, and, and apparently my theory was correct, and um, there's, a, there's a technique to this, and it takes a lot of explaining, I can't really go into it here, but you can see, here's our footage, scaled down to about the right size, laid over the top of our, our, uh, our, our blank plate. Here it is, masked out, to mask out the tree and the other elements. And then from here, we'll add our, um, our chroma key. So now we have it shrunk back down to its proper scale. And you see right here with the chroma key um, that it looks like we've got a little blue landing strip here for him to walk on right on top of the water. Now, it took me about six layers of uh, using Ultimat to actually get rid of all the blue um, in the water. And eventually, I did have to rotoscope uh, him out just a little bit to get him to get it perfect. Um, and then uh, you can see the, the, the shadow there. Here's the, that's the old ship before we, before I, um, I, uh, Tim built us a new one. Um, but it doesn't look like it fits, so we put a shadow. You can see that the gray areas there are the two shadows that we drew in. And uh, the shed, uh, of course, the shadow that we drew in on Jody himself uh, is actually animated. So it looks like it moves with him as he walks and his legs cross as it walks. And then um, there you can see now they, they look like they belong. And, and then here's our, here's the clip as it appeared in the movie itself. And we did that to kind of draw attention to him walking on water. That was the droid's point of view. Um, next is layering. Layering is something I figured out late, late in the process. Um, here's the opening shot of the film, which was rendered out in Max's default standline renderer, because I didn't know there was such a thing as Brazil's public test renderer. And here it is put together in layers. You can see each, each little element's built on its own layer. Um, rendered out uh, with a transparent uh, alpha channel and then composited in the end of After Effects and put together. Now the explosion I'll go into later on in the pyro section, but that explosion is actually a combination of uh, explosion I did in Max itself combined with a fireball that I created uh, myself using pyrotechnics. And then uh, one of the great things about layering is it gives you much better control over the elements, that you can control each one's exposure, uh, color correction, um, and then here the, the final image you can see is very, very desaturated, um, which is what I did, and yet quite yet another adjustment layer to it. And um, if you'd seen this, uh, the other thing is, is it allows you computers that are slower to, to not choke. Um, my, when I tried to render that scene out by itself, um, my computer kept crashing. Um, and again, I'll, I'll go into more, we have some more layers here, um, but um, layering gives you that advantage that, that you can control everything individually. Also, what you can do is, uh, it gives your computer, it's not less rendering time, but it's less rendering time at once. In other words, if I had rendered up this scene and or the opening scene um, all together at once, uh, my computer more than likely would have crashed. Um, the other thing that might have happened is uh, it might have taken, you know, several weeks for it to finish rendering, which I, and, and that's time that I can't use my computer for anything, uh, which is good to have a backup computer for rendering. And here's our separate layers for the ship. It's pretty self-explanatory. Here's our, our mist layer before you saw the exhaust in the ship itself. Um, then here's the ship with the exhaust. And the exhaust is rendered out at a very, very low resolution. It's not photorealistic, but I'm only using it as a marker for my masks, and I'm using it to help create uh, a distortion for this next shot here, you can see that uh, it distorts the background. You kind of see it almost like a uh, like a, a heat sort of uh, heat jet wash simulation. And of course, that's the final shot. Now the camera shape came from this. People ask me if we use the plugin. No, this is what we did. Uh, I taped this thing to the wall, set up the camera, and uh, banged on the tripod to get it to shake, and then uh, track that uh, shape with a motion tracker, motion tracker, and uh, apply that uh, information to the footage to make it shake. Our next selection is Pyro. Um, with pyrotechnics, um, I do not recommend to anyone, and I mean anyone, that you do this by yourself, that you don't take 
extreme precautions, and I'm talking fire extinguishers, um, plenty of distance between you and any pyrotechnic you set off, and plenty of distance between your pyrotechnic and anything that's flammable. All of my pyrotechnics were shot um, in the desert, um, at least 100 yards between it, from anything flammable and 50 feet from the camera. Um, I had two fire extinguishers and I had two assistants. Um, so let's get into the pyro that we've got here. Um, our, our first little segment is, uh, is gasoline. And gasoline is an extremely volatile substance. The explosion you see here was shot from 50 feet away and it was a little baggie of gasoline no bigger than the size of a golf ball. Now, this isn't like lighter fluid, this isn't like playing around. One golf ball sized baggie of gasoline produced that much flame and that violent of a flame. And you can see it throwing things out uh, in, in different directions and it's pretty violent. These right here are, um, these are gunpowder explosions. Um, they've been color corrected. But uh, this, these gunpowder explosions were uh, gunpowder, just black powder wrapped in uh, tissue paper and uh, the square being all taped together with masking tape was no bigger than the quarter, quarter of the size of a slice of bread. Um, here we used gunpowder um, to produce smoke. We had a line of gunpowder uh, in front of the, the ramp which we lit as, I walk, as uh, Jody walks down and then we had burning rags in front of the, right, right underneath the lens to give us the smoke there. Um, with pyro, I didn't go into much of it um, because, uh, it, it, like I said, it is dangerous. I don't recommend that anybody try this stuff um, without someone. I would suggest uh, probably ex-military, probably a lot older than you, um, because I did consult. Uh, I had a guy I used to work with who was about 50 years old, who was ex-military, who specialized in explosives, who taught me pretty much everything that I know. So uh, I suggest that you seek out, out someone like that. If you can't find someone like that, and you can't find somebody with experience with this, um, don't attempt it because you could get you or someone that you care about, or even some, somebody that you don't care about, uh, severely hurt or killed. Um, anyway, that's the effects breakdown for Proof of Chaos. Thank you so much for, uh, for checking out the film and checking out our, our breakdown here. Um, like I said, I, I'm always, uh, always available online. Um, by email to answer questions. I also, uh, also there's a thread of ours on the force.net. If you go to the force.net forum, fan films forum, um, there's a thread in there for Proof of Chaos, um, a non-hosted fan film. And uh, I'm always happy to answer questions there. If, if anybody sees the film and says, "How did you do this? How did you do that?" Um, it's not covered in your, uh, it's not covered in your effects breakdown. Um, again, the information's out there. It's 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 free to the public. Um, I, I, there were people that taught me things, um, so I'm more than willing to teach other people uh, the things that we've learned here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope you learned something, and uh, share the film with your friends. And, and uh, thanks for checking us out.